Okay, we'll be starting with chemistry in the first hour. I will do periodic table first because some people are on the way and I believe most students are here for most. Right, so we we'll start with periodic table. Uh, something easy and light, I hope. Okay, for periodic table chapter, it's kind of memory work, unfortunately. But for chemistry, certain chapters, if you want to do well, you need to know the underlying principle, means how to study that chapter. So because there's memory work involved, right? Your main goal is to shorten or find ways or patterns to cut down on the memorizing. So for example, what you need to know for periodic table chapter is the trends as you go down. Have everyone covered periodic table chapter? Group 1, group 17 elements. All covered? Halfway, okay. Have you all covered? Okay. Online people, you all can respond as well, okay? Either through the chat, emoji. Have you all covered the other table chapter? Group 1 and group 17. Okay, what are your group 1 elements called? Yeah, I remember. Group 1 elements. Two words. Okay. Alkaline metals. Do you know why they are called alkaline metals? With? Form? <laughs> Yeah, they are called alkaline metals because they react with water to form alkalis. So for example, sodium metal react with water to form an alkali. One common alkali that you all know is sodium hydroxide. See many times, right? Alkalis of equal state and hydrogen gas. Now all the chemicals for is correct already. You balance the equation by writing numbers in front. So I need to have two here, two here, and two here. This one overlap with your reactivity series chapter if you all learned already. Metals react with water right, to form metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. That's actually an overlap for your equation. In your periodic table chapter, you also learn alkaline metals react with water to form alkalites and hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas will be gaseous state. Okay, what are the trends as you go down group 1? Yeah, your short form. Huh? Your density will increase in general. Huh? Your reactivity will increase. And your melting point, boiling point will decrease. Then we go to your group 17, halogens. Halogens are diatomic molecules. They exist like that. That's why we write a chemical formula. It's always Cl2, Br2, F2, so on and so forth. Okay, they are diatomic molecules. They are also colored substances. They are non-metals, low melting point, boiling point. But how does the trend change as you go down group 17? Color intensity increases, this becomes darker as so you go down. It's just that I'm trying to like summarize everything here. Okay, and then your Reactivity decreases. The color intensity increases. This as you go down, it gets darker. Yeah. You want to write darker, so you understand this. Okay, so if you notice, right, I write in this way actually very intentionally. When you all make your own notes, this is something you all can do as well. You all see got any patterns or not? Can you see that two goes up? 
one goes down. That is one, both sides. That's one way to cut down on memorizing. Another way is some students will easily recognize that where is the this orange? Okay. Uh, this? Uh, I was trying to attend the What you all notice is that eh, the reactivity trend and the melting point trend is opposite of each other. Means what? You just need to remember one side, the other side you just flip up. One lesser thing to memorize. The odd trend, density and color, both are the same. Right? So for periodic table chapter or some of the chemistry chapters, one of the skills ideally is how can you consolidate all the information such that you have lesser things to memorize. That's one way to study. Okay, then we look at the chemistry notes over here. Another way to study is for larger chapters. How do you break down the chapter into subtopics? So in this periodic table chapter, I actually split into general periodic table trends. It means as you go left to right across the period, up and down, right, a group, and then you have your Specific trends, group 1, group 17, and lastly, your noble gases, which I didn't write. Call noble gas, a lot of students know, unreactive, why? Stable electronic configuration, very short for combined sites. Okay, so let's look at the general trends now. For general trends, don't really need to memorize as well. Periodic table is given to you during your exam. Okay. Then over here, where is it? Right, the first trend that you need to know is how is the periodic table arranged? The elements are actually arranged according to increasing atomic number or proton number. Not mass number. Huh? A lot of students will think that it's mass number because it really looks like the mass is increasing. But actually there is inconsistency. So if you look at the right side over here, for chlorine, 35.5, 40, go back down to 39. There is inconsistency. But the proton number is steadily increasing. So do not get mixed up. Huh? Let me reply the online student. Yep. Okay, what you need to know, key concept as well, the group number actually tells you the number of outer shell electrons. Group number tells you the number of outer shell electrons. Here will be 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Just need to look at the ones place. The ones place actually tells you the number of valence electrons. Okay, there are two exceptions. You know what I There is two exceptions to this rule. I know. The teacher cover. Okay, hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen does not belong to any group. That's one. Helium is in group 18, but it only has two valence electrons. Okay. Commonly tested key concept as well, which you all should have learned in set 3 under atomic structure chapter. If the elements are in the same group, means they have same number of valence electrons. If they have the same number of valence electrons, then they have similar chemical properties. So if exact question asks you to explain why do substances have similar chemical properties, link back to the number of outer shell 
of Venus electrons. Do not say same group, but same group is not a keyword. Same number of Venus electrons. Okay, then your period number, period is from left to right. It will tell you the number of electron shells. Means your elements in period 2 will have 2 electron shells. Elements in period 3 will have 3 electron shells. If I will draw very quickly, lithium will look like that. Lithium is in period 2, right? Got 2 electron shells. Since it's in group 1, 1 valence electron. If you go down one further, sodium, period 3, got 3 electron shells. Okay, 2.8.1 Okay, 3 shells Metallic character decreases across the period As you go from left to right, you go from metals to non-metals Okay If you want to elaborate further, metallic character has to do with tendency to lose valence electron As you go from left to right, elements are less likely to lose their valence electrons Check back here. Yeah. As you go from left to right, we say metallic character decreases, right? In other words, as you go from left to right of the periodic table, the tendency for the elements to lose their valence electrons actually decreases. If you look on the left side, your sodium, how does your metals on the left gain full shell by losing electrons? Right. But if you look at the extreme right side, do the extreme right side elements lose electrons or not? To gain full shell? They don't. They do the opposite. They gain electrons. Instead of losing electrons, they want to gain electrons. So we say low metallic character. There is also another general trend. If you want, you can add it in. Atomic radius increases down the group. This one don't need to memorize because down the group, You have more number of electron shells, huh? so the radius of the atom will increase. Huh? Right, it's not quite logical, you don't really need to memorize this. Atomic radius, atomic radii is just the radius of the atom or ion. Okay. Questions? Online people? So far quite okay, right? Alright, then I will just wrap this up with whatever I've got covered. Group 1 metals, alkaline metals, they are a bit special. Unlike your other metals, they are soft, can be cut with a knife. Low melting point, boiling point, low density. Right, this tree is special, different from other metals. They can conduct electricity due to mobile electrons, not mobile ions. Uh. Be careful of the keyword that you use to explain electrical conductivity. Okay, and I'm right. Then for group 17, last point. Group 17, very commonly tested concept is displacement reaction. A more reactive group 17 element or halogen can displace a less reactive halogen from its salt solution. To simplify things, compound. I know a lot of students struggle to understand what is a salt or what is a solution. Just compound. Okay, for those that learn reactivity series, it is exactly the same. More reactive, kick out less reactive. Chlorine is more reactive than bromine because chlorine is at the top. Basically, those higher up in the, reactive, uh, in the periodic table they are more reactive. Okay. This fluorine is the most reactive because as you go down, reactivity increases. So it decreases. That means your fluorine is the most reactive. Okay. 
Hopefully you can see, roaming got displaced or kicked out. Take note of the two question types for displacement. Describe observation. Explain observation. Sometimes they can link into one question. Sometimes they can link into, or sometimes they can separate the question, part one, part two. Take note of the question requirement. When they say describe, you tell me what can you see. When they ask you to explain observation, why do you see? So I'm going to give you a sample using this over here. Huh? Okay, if you are asked to describe observation, you should tell me color change. Is there any effervescence? Is there any solid forming? Is there any color change of solution? These are things that you can see. If they ask you to explain why you see this change, it will be here. This is the explanation. Because, okay, I think I write over here a new one. Chlorine is more reactive than bromine and will display bromine from equal sodium bromide to form bromine. That's why you see the color changing the reddish brown because bromine is reddish brown. Okay, so common mistake in exam, when examiners ask students to describe observation, they tell them this. Yeah, students can see got displacement, but you are not answering the question. When they ask you to describe, please tell me what you see. You cannot see displacement, but you can see color change. Okay, that's the logic behind it. Describe means what you see. Okay, if you are done, you all can try the next page worksheet. Just some true and false. Common exam tricks, see whether y'all can recognize. Okay. Here I split it up to general trends, group 1, group 17. Okay, maybe 3 minutes. Based on your instinct, uh, don't overthink.
Can you type T or F? I think generally all done. I go through. Uh. No worries, I can't finish. Okay, this is for the first question. I think I made it quite even. Three, two, three, four. Okay, what should be the same across period? Number of electron shell. Down the group, what should be the same? Valence electron. This one should be proton number. These are the mistakes. Hello. Melting point decreases as you go down. 
sodium is on top, so higher melting point. See, basically this is the least reactive, highest melting point. As you go down, most reactive, lowest melting point. Application of the trends. Then your rubidium. Rubidium is all the way below. More reactive. Okay. Then now we go to group 17. There are diatomic molecules. That's why you say Cl2, Br2, so on and so forth. They are non metals, so low melting point, boiling point. They react with group 16 elements to form covalent. Group 17 and group 16 they are both non metals. Non metal, non metal, covalent. Oops. They gain one valence electron. That's correct. That's why F minus, Br minus, so on so forth. Melting point and boiling point increases. Color intensity or down the group it gets darker, that is true. Application Iodine is able to displace bromine from equals potassium bromide. This will be false. Iodine is less reactive. Because iodine is below, less reactive than bromine, it cannot displace or kick out bromine. Okay, chlorine is on top. Chlorine more reactive than Iodine. So remember for your group 17, the higher up it is for your group 17, the more reactive. Okay. Then group 17 application, they are going to test displacement very lightly because this is like the hardest part of the chapter. So they're going to test it. You need it. Okay. So how do you interpret displacement results? Your starting point is always the element. Can you see this the element? The elemental form, okay? You should be reading like this for the displacement. X can displace Y and Z from their ionic compound. That's why Y minus Z minus. Okay? X can displace both Y and Z. What does that mean? Most reactive. Oh, that's the answer. Z cannot displace anything at all. Least reactive. So I write over here, cannot displace at all, this reactive. Displace both, most reactive. Spend some time trying to figure out how to interpret this data. The moment you get it, it should be quite straightforward. You can solve using elimination. Okay? Last one for displacement. Using the apparatus shown, chlorine is passed through the tube after a short time. Colored substances are seen at P, Q, and R. This is my element, right? So start from here. Can displace this or not? Chlorine is more reactive because chlorine is above. So bromine came out. What's the color of bromine gets? What do you think? Maybe it's brown. Okay, why do you see a reddish brown vapor? Using a chemical equation, explain your answer. Remember, group 70 elements are always diatomic. So write Cl2, potassium bromide, this is K plus and Br minus, ionic compound. So the formula of potassium bromide is KBr. Then your chlorine is going to go in. Kick up your bromine and displace it. Run the KCL. Okay. Right, then now you just balance. Put two here, put two here. And you're done. So for displacement reaction, things that they will test is do you know how it works? 
do you know the observations? Do you know how to write equations? Do you know how to explain why there is displacement or why don't have? So over here, explanation, right? So chlorine is more reactive than bromine and will displace bromine from potassium bromide from reddish brown bromine. Okay, state the color of the vapor at Q. So what's gonna happen? Now you got Br2, right? Here got Br2. Your bromine is going to displace your iodine out, right? Iodine is going to come out. What do you think is the color of iodine vapor? Okay, it's purple or violet? I think it's purple. So do take note, your iodine is a purplish black solid but when it's a gas, it's purple When it dissolves in water, it is brown Got three colors, so I'll just take note <laughs> Yeah, but don't worry <laughs> Okay, your part 2 is actually the same as your A part 2 So I will skip that and then I'll go to most Okay, explanation is the same, it's just that your halogen change only. Hopefully you all can see the pattern. I just write for you all straight away. Huh? Only the halogen change, actually everything else is the same. I think got kicked out. Okay, now we go to Mohs, uh, the most exciting part. Right, where is Mohs? Okay, Mohs is a huge chapter, it's also a difficult chapter. There are like levels to conquer. The first thing you all need to know is how to calculate MR. Okay, MR, molar mass, relative molecular mass, relative formula mass, all different terms, different definition, but number is the same. To put it very simply, what is the total mass of my chemical substance. So there are a few examples over here. Nothing to memorize, just need to know how to use your periodic table. Each chlorine has a mass number of 35.5. Okay? If you have Cl2 molecule, 35.5 times 2, uh, that gives you the total mass. MR is just that. This is the first level because later on one of the chemical formula you need to know how to calculate your MR or molar mass. So just make sure that you can do this first. Once you understand this, then you'll look at the chemical formulas. Once you memorize chemical formulas already, then you can attempt the problem sum kind of questions. So this is like the level 2. Okay, there is mainly yeah, 3 or 4 formulas. So so called memorize or take note. Okay, I don't expect you to memorize at this point. I know most will take quite a while. The key objective for today is you all know how to apply these formulas. Feel free to refer if you need. Okay. Because the skill set or the stats is actually very similar. So, before I actually go into the types of question, like what is Mo all about? Uh? Mo is just quantity. To be specific, chemical quantity. It's actually the number of particles. Uh. So when I say 1 pair, you all know it's 2. When I say 1 dozen, you all can tell me it's 12. When I say 1 mole, 
1 mole is just this huge number 6.02 times 10 power 23 it's a quantity word okay just like when i say 1 million or something 1 million can write as 10 power 6 okay, it's just a fixed amount of quantity so logically speaking, if you have more mole of substance, more quantity of substance, your mass will increase. More quantity should have higher mass. Huh? Similarly, if you have higher mole of gas, it should occupy a larger volume. Right? More mole of gas occupy larger volume. That's the logic behind it. If you have more mole, more substance dissolved inside a liquid, we say that it's more concentrated because there are more particles inside. Dissolved. Okay, in the solution. Okay, so for your more questions, whenever you recognize more questions, the first step you don't know what to do, calculate more first. Sometimes can give you one mark. Okay, but over here, relative formula max. You just have to think like mark. Okay, so this part I can go through as an example. Magnesium, according to the periodic table, is 24. 12. Each oxygen is 16. So calculate the total mass. Eighty four. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, just calculating MR. Calculate the number of moles of zero point four two grams of magnesium carbonate. What you are doing essentially is just converting between units. I give you mass. Can you convert to mole for me or not? Yes. Which formula? Only one formula got mass. So use this formula lah. Mole equal mass divided by molar mass. Okay. Don't know what to do, find mole first. Molar mass is the same as MR, okay? In terms of magnitude. Just different definition. So that's why when you substitute inside the number, it's going to be the same. Same magnitude means same number. This one, 22, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. Okay. Very bad now. Oh, yeah. Maybe I calculate wrong. Maybe, wait, 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 wait. Is it me or what? I mental sum up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I need a calculator. Okay, up to this point, usually that's the easy part. Okay, your chemical equation is actually like a cooking recipe. Your cooking recipe states that one unit of this, when it breaks down, you give me one unit of this, MgO, one unit of CO2. That's what the chemical equation tells you. Right, so referencing to this chemical equation or cooking recipe. Next step is to form a ratio between what you know or what you calculated. Uh, don't write this during exam, this is for you to process. Calculated finding. Okay, what do I mean by this? What do you calculate? The most of magnesium carbonate, right? So you put magnesium carbonate over here. What are you trying to find? Carbon dioxide, which is CO2. Okay, according to the recipe, how many mole give you how many mole? No, no. One is to one. The first mole ratio is always obtained from the chemical equation. Right? Cooking recipe says that one unit of MgCO3 will give you one unit of CO2. But in reality, do you have one mole? No? Remember mole is quantity. In reality, how much you have? 0 0.005. So means what? You are using lesser than one mole. Lesser quantity of reactants give you lesser products. Huh? That's the logic behind it. Huh? So this is 0 0.005. So equivalent ratios. This is from equation. This is your actual. Means how much you actually have. In this experiment, you only have 0 0.005 mole. You don't have one mole. This is the final answer. Right, then the last step.
Compression calculator, so calculator. Calculate the maximum volume of carbon dioxide for you have more of carbon dioxide. Can you convert more back to volume? Which formula? This one, huh? Carbon dioxide is a gas. Take note, this is gas. Don't anyhow use. Gas are uh, gas. A lot of students anyhow use. Because there's another formula with volume. Where is it? Yeah. So take note. Is it volume of gas or is it volume of liquid solution? Cannot anyhow use the wrong formula. So if you want to calculate in dm cube, you times 24. If you want to calculate in cm cube, you times 24,000. So volume. Yes. 0 0.05 times 24. 0.15 times 24. Okay, so this is an example whereby the question break everything down into many steps for you. Okay, now this is your starting point. More question, right? So calculate more first up. Which formula allow you to calculate the more of the gas? If you are given in DM cube, you divide by 24. Huh? If you are given CM cube, you divide by 24,000. This is 0 0.25. Okay. Calculate more, right? So which formula allow me to calculate more and have volume of gas? Based on the starting information, which formula can you use to calculate more? That's always a starting point. They are converting between units. Three is a unit conversion. Convert mass to more than more to volume of gas. Calculate the mass of lead to oxide, PDO. So remember the ratio is always what you calculated or what you know against what you are trying to find. So you are, you know NO2, you are trying to find out about that two oxide. So put like that. What does the cooking recipe state? Four units of this, give me two units of this. So you simplify the ratio four to two become two is to one. Okay, you have your equation ratio already. This is like a reference. But in reality, how much more quantity do you have? 0 0.25. 2 units is 0 0.25. 1 unit, you divide by 2. You get 0 0.125. 2 units, 0 0.25. 1 unit, 0 0.125. Okay, after this, I will stop, let you process, let you try as well. Okay, if you have questions, you can ask me as well. i just go through one last example. Okay, you got a mole of PBO already. Can you convert mole back to mass or not? Which formula got mass? Always write your base formula first, okay? So, mole equal mass over molar mass, right? Just write at the side. You want to calculate mass, means mass equals to mole times molar mass. This is the mole. Molar mass is your total mass, the MR. So your lead should be... two seven plus 16. PBO mark. And PBO. 207 plus 16.
Okay, 7.875. Yep, and depending on your module, both accepted actually. Okay, so what do you realize? Using the first step, third step is to use the formula, calculate your mode or calculate what you want. Second step is to form a ratio. You reference to the balance equation, form a ratio, so that you can find a mole of the substance that you want to find. Then you can just convert the units. Well. Essentially, that's the steps. Uh. Okay, for three, I give your hint. Your starting point is mass. You recognize more question, right? Remember what I do? Find more first. Don't know what to do, just find more. Can you convert mass to more or not? After you find more, then you just convert the volume. Uh. Let us try. Uh. If you've got questions, can ask me now as well. Final answer is below. Okay. At this point, I'll let you try to self-explore. Final answers, I think, provided all below. See whether you can get now. Got questions, can ask. I don't know what to do, find more first. Can find more? <laughs> This one is one. 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 This one Okay, so you don't need more specs. Oh, you got three? You want to get three? That's what you need for conversion. Okay, question three and four are the example of you need conversion. You got a for four. Huh? As I said, more question, find more first. Okay, with the starting information, how can you find more? Try to recognize this over here. This set of information, because according to the formula, concentration equals mole divided by volume. What does that mean? You want to calculate mole, you just shift concentration times volume. But take note, this is dm cube, this is cm cube. For chemistry, 99% of the time, you need to convert cm cube to dm cube, you divide by 1000. Now in dm cube. Huh? 78 concentration formula. Okay. I'll go through most of it in class, so no worries. Yeah, purely table, so I'm gonna go through in class here. But the uh, one, two, five is the main one. Five can come out of practical also. Yeah, you can have more function in practical. I give extra, so some students faster than that. If I take small. Four is just unit conversion. You convert to mole and then change to mass. Ah. You want mass what? So 3 and 4, you don't need to use any ratio. Ah. You are just converting units. For 3, is converting mass of a gas to volume of a gas. But the middle part is mole. You find mole already, then you can substitute into a second formula to calculate your volume. For question 4, you calculate mole first. After you get mole, you can calculate mass. You just using different formula. So 0.4 uh, 0.25 Yeah How do you convert more back to mass? This uh, Concentration times volume So then I got side is 40, yeah. So 4 grams. So according to this formula, mole equals mass over molar mass. You want to calculate mass, you just shift to the other side, mole times molar mass.
mass of annual H more times molar mass 23 plus 16 plus 1 mass number 23, 16, 1 then you add all together to find the total mass that's the molar mass you get 4 grams it's which one? Yeah, same two. Right. Oxygen gas is O2. Yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah. Well, that makes our oxygen gas O2 is very good. Question 5 More equal concentration than volume to start, most of you all get it okay, This is your starting point, you realize no mass information This one will have you got uh, concentration and volume So try to recognize this, uh. usually this is like one set of information This will allow you to do your more calculation for the first step Your actual calculation is after you get a mole, they just convert back to concentration. Yeah, I think five is one of the most important. Yeah. Now so we try out. It's okay, you got time. So this number of moles will get how many H2SO4? 
Okay, concentration got two different units, mole per dm cube or gram per dm cube. How do you convert mole per dm cube to gram per dm cube? If I give you more, how do I convert back to mass? Can we call? Time to divide. Ah, you all realize it? The numerator changing, right? For more, how do you go back to mass? You times molar mass. Ah. One lesser formula to memorize. You want to go from grams to more? Normally, how do you convert grams to more? You divide by molar mass, right? So same. Ah.
Okay, so in this case, we are going from mole per dm cube to gram per dm cube times molar mass. Use the 5SF1 to prevent rounding off error. Molar mass of sulfuric acid is 98. Yeah. I mean 6.287. Alright, I'm going to break here for 5 minutes, give you all some time to process what questions can ask me also. What? It's just extra practice. But, okay, maybe I just go through, not the question, but the question type. You notice that sometimes questions, right, don't even break down for you. They just ask you, okay, calculate the volume of gas produced on me. You need to straight away apply the 3 steps. Okay? Sometimes they don't break the question down for you, you automatically need to carry out the steps. 1, 2, 3 yourself. Find mole, set up your ratio, convert your mole of gas to volume of gas. So this is just exposure for question types. Okay, final answer given to you all as well. Feel free to practice on your own. Right, let's break for 5 minutes, 841.
Okay. Now we go to physics. We'll start off with waves, after that we'll end off with light. Okay, so what are the main thing to know for waves, summarize in two pages only? The first thing that you all need to understand is the difference between transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Okay? So just to show you all a video, your transverse waves. Okay, as you can see, the wave is moving from left to right, but how are your particles in the spring moving? Uh, this one I see how later, okay? You text me? Okay. Your wave is moving from left to right, but your particles over here is moving up and down. Hopefully you all can see. I will play again, huh? Exit the waves perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. The wave is moving from left to right, particle moving up and down. Transverse T, right? You can think of perpendicular la, or like that. Also can. Transverse direction of vibration of the particles is perpendicular to the direction of the wave. On the other hand, your longitudinal. This that makes up the wave is along the direction in which the wave travels. Wave moving from left to right, but the particles in the spring also moving left to right, parallel. You can think of it as long. Okay, so sideways, huh? Hopefully, you can see. Longitudinal waves are also referred to as compression waves. Alright, so that's the first key objective understanding the difference between transverse and longitudinal wave. Okay, let me just cancel this. Right, this is the actual keyword that you need. Vibration is perpendicular to the direction of wave. Particles vibrate parallel to the direction of the wave. You also need to know certain examples for whole level syllabus. Longitudinal wave. Right, right, yeah. Oh, I didn't give you a... Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> for longitudinal waves, in all level syllabus, sound waves. The rest usually transverse waves, unless the question state otherwise. Then you have certain terms in a wave that you all need to know. Crest is the highest point. Your trough is the lowest point. Okay. The amplitude refers to the maximum displacement from the rest position. What does that mean? At first, when there's no wave, your particles are all horizontal on this line. When the wave passes through from left to right, this particle is going to move up to this thing called maximum displacement and that's what we call the amplitude. Okay? What's the maximum displacement from the original or rest position? Did the particle move up or down? Your wavelength refers to the shortest distance between any two points. Okay, they are in phase. In phase means in shape, go up, go down together. Usually this will be between okay, crest to crest over here as you can see. Trough to trough is also one wavelength. Wavelength can be written using this symbol, your lambda. Alternatively, one wavelength can also be like that. Can you see one repeated pattern or one wave or one oscillation? Yeah. Here to here also one wavelength. Okay. Right, that's it for this. Two key terms that you all need to understand. Period is the time taken by each point on the wave to complete one oscillation. What does this mean? Let's say for a transverse wave, right? Your particle is actually going to move up, go down, go down, and come up to original position. What is the time for the particle to make this full cycle? Right, this for so called mini motion. Your school may have taught you another way. In the old syllabus, period is defined as the time taken for one oscillation wave. This one is easier to understand in my opinion, but I need to teach the new definition from your textbook in case. I'm not sure if your school will mark you down for old definition or not. Okay, but I would recommend understanding the one that I wrote at the top. Yeah, because of best new syllabus. Okay, then frequency. 
number of oscillations each point on the wave complete per, se per second means how many times the particle have this motion per second to put it more simply the old syllabus you all learn as number of waves per second number of waves or oscillation okay how many times did it complete this cycle in one second the units for frequency will be hertz In your whole wave chapter, this will set the foundation for your light, sound, EM waves. You will be needing these two equations as well. So very important. F equals to 1 over T. Frequency equals to 1 over period. Lah. For physics, capital T usually we use for period. For small t, we use for time. Usually. It's just a representation. Okay, your second formula. V equals F lambda. Okay, so these two key formulas are very important because linked to other chapters in your wave. Exam, they will give you two different kinds of graphs. Displacement, distance graph, you can get wavelength. Cross distance, ma. Okay. Displacement, time graph, you will get period, sorry, should be this. So look at the axis, ah. the different type of graph is going to give you different information and this is important, why? Your whole wave chapter is about applying these two formulas. It's a matter of whether you can get the information out or not to do your calculations. Okay. Then the last thing to go through is a wave front. A wave front is an imaginary line that joins all adjacent points that are in phase. Okay, a bit hard to see over here. Let me zoom in. Okay, so each of these is called a wave front. Can you see that the wave front is connecting like all the crests of the waves? I can draw more waves. Right, blah blah blah, more waves. It's actually connecting all the crests. Because the particles at the crest are said to be in phase. They are both going up, down, they are in sync together. Okay, so that's what a wave front essentially is. Same over here. This is maybe like the crest, this is like the crest. You can draw more waves like. Okay, it's fine also. So this is like the press. Okay, in your exam, you are going to receive two different kind of diagram. This is the side view, but what you're going to get in exam is something like that. This is the top view. Each of these is called wavefront, WF. Huh? This is one wavelength. Okay. Then you have the circle diagram, top view as well. Each of this circle is called a wavefront, but each of this is called a wavelength. Right? And that's all you need to know for waves. Basically, it's how do you apply or extract information so that you can apply these two formulas. And got some questions over here, we go through. Huh? But at this point, questions before we go through? Just no. Okay. First one, just testing definition, amplitude, maximum displacement from max position. If definition come up for MCQ, then so yeah, no need to memorize. Okay. A wave generator produces 10 oscillations of wave in one second. The distance between the two crash shown is 20 cm. Exam is going to give you some like, extract information like this. Right? But are you able to extract the information? Get what you need for calculation. Usually it's just this formula for your weight. But what does this actually mean? 10 oscillation in one second. This is actually your frequency. Number of waves in one second. Okay, your understanding of period and frequency need to be strong. So that you can extract the information out. Frequency 10, I put here. Lah. Okay. From here to here is 20. One wavelength is how much? Remember one wavelength is this. There's four gaps. 20 divided by 4. 5. Okay, 50. Then also so like, eh, no answer. Why? You don't 
this. Okay, the units are whenever you are doing calculations in physics, watch the units. You are in cm. Answer is in meters. You want to convert, you divide by hundred lah. So if you see your answer very similar already, maybe it's a matter of units conversion. These two graphs, what can you get out of it? Displacement, distance. So this is one wavelength. Displacement time. You're going to get period. The speed of the water wave right, is back to this formula. It's just a matter of whether you can get your information out. Wavelength is 2. A lot of students are excited or put 0 0.04 inside over here, but wrong. The graph gives you period, not frequency. You want to get frequency, you need to convert using the first formula. One divided by zero point zero four four over hundred twenty five. Oops. Okay. Twenty five times two. This. Okay, four. Textual information. It takes zero point four zero second to generate four waves. The wavelength of each wave is four point zero cm. One is the speed of the wave. Teach your secret trick, ah. Uh. This one. Okay. Should I get a mic? Four waves in zero by four zero second. Okay, I'm gonna teach you how to use primary school method to solve. Then let me show one. What is the speed of the wave, right? Essentially, you need to use this formula. Lah. You realize what are you missing? Your wavelength is four. You are missing frequency. What do you understand by frequency again? Number of waves in one second. How many waves can you make in one second? Primary school, what do you do? Oh my gosh. Hey, primary school, you have to do this, right? 4 divided by 0 0.4. 10. 10 waves in one second. Uh, you got frequency, yeah. Okay, this is how you can convert textual information, usually this kind, to get your frequency and period. Remember, frequency is the number of waves you can make in one second. If question asks for period, how? I write at the top. Huh? If you want period, period refers to time taken for one wave. What do you do? Divide by 4. Divide by 4. If you have iPhone, you get 0 0.10 seconds. This allows you to get period and frequency. Okay, and of course, students will ask, can I get a period first then I put inside formula get frequency or not? Can. It's the same. You calculate this out, you're going to get 10. Same answer. This is math, there are many methods. This is just one of the easier methods. Okay. 
This one example should give you enough exposure to get the information out. Question 5 is just charity marks. Amplitude, take note, is from here to here. Here to here also can. A lot of students will draw from here to here, then wrong. Right? It's always from where, sir. Then take note of instruction as well. Label with an arrow and letter A. This is displacement time. Period. If press and trough should be easy. Press the highest point. Trough is the lowest point. Something to be careful of also, whenever you have a graph, make sure the you need no prefix. Ah. In this case, you've got millisecond. Milli is 10 power minus 3. Right, just take note of that. Oh, okay. I put this question here. Calculate the frequency of the wave. So your part B. Ah. Remember, this graph gives you period, not frequency. So your period is over here to here, 100, you can see, 200 minus 100, from here to here is 100. 100 millisecond. Milli is the prefix of 10 power minus 3. When you calculate this out, you're going to get 0.1. Then I will find our frequency. 10. Okay, if you want one step, can or not, yes, sure, go ahead. You can just do this as well. Okay, you will get the same answer, one step. Alright. Okay. Last question for waves. The log is 6 meters long. Four complete waves take 20 seconds. Okay, you see this kind of information, huh? To pass point A. Determine the wavelength of the water waves. This 6 is for 4 wavelength. You can see? 6 divided by 4, you're going to get 1.5. This free mark, please take it. Period of the water wave. What is the time taken for one wave? You do the primary school method. 4 wave in how many seconds? 20. Period is what? Time taken for one wave. You want one wave. So hopefully you can see it. divide by 4 on both sides. 5 seconds. It is for your part B. Yeah. Frequency? Apply formula, use the primary school method, up to you. 1 divided by 5, 0 0.2. You need Hertz. You got frequency, you got wavelength, you can calculate your speed. Frequency 0 0.2 times wavelength 1.5, 3. No, two times. Five. Two three. All right, last reminder for you all. In your exam, if you are given blanks like this, look at the units and you all do calculation. Okay? All right, if not, that's all for waves. Yeah, those of you that don't need light, like, you can be first. Huh? What? Why? Huh? Too free. No, I want to eat. <laughs> yeah. Y'all have questions? Too fast? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Last half an hour, like, like, like.
Oh, yeah, I'm smiling with you. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. Give me that, yeah. Life can be broken down into three subtopics Reflection, Refraction, and your lenses. Reflection actually just need to know two things, two key concepts. The first one is angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. Angle of incidence is always between the normal and the light wave. Because exam questions are going to trick you. They really like to give something like that. A lot of students will write angle of reflection as 30, but it's actually 60. So do take note, uh, the metric in the exam. And then the second key concept that you all need to know is this the distance from the mirror of the object is equal to the distance of the image from the mirror. Right, see how. Okay, the distance is the same. Bye bye. This is the second key concept that you need to know. Okay. So usually the harder questions right is testing this, but today I'll just go through the two most common type. So I teach you how to apply huh? Let's go to the worksheet, okay? Okay, so something like that. You want to try? You want to try? You want to can try one. Two, I can go through. Easy, right? Wait, wait, can I cannot try again. I just see angle of distance from this between normal and light Yeah, it's alright. This one I got coincidence. Yeah, I'm gonna draw a normal one with this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and got coincidence always between the light ray and the normal. And got refraction is equal to angle of incidence, so 35 as well. Yeah, this is just a trick uh, of distraction. Second one. How far away from the patient is the image of the chart? The chart and the mirror is 5 meters away from each other. Right? The object and the mirror 5 meters apart. The image of the chart and the mirror should be 5 meters also. The second key concept. Lah. Distance between object and mirror is 5. Distance between image and mirror also 5. Then now you can answer no? how far away from the patient is the image of the chart? They are just asking you to calculate this up. 7 no? 5 plus 2. Then now we go to lens. Lens is the third one, of course, lens is the next easiest. Refraction will be the hardest, so let's do that the last. Okay, what do we have here? For lenses, your teacher probably give you note something like that, but actually all you need to know is how to see. What do I mean by that? Most schools now, right, according to the new syllabus, they are going to give you all this. Don't need to draw anymore. All syllabus need to draw. Okay, but new syllabus don't need to draw. School will give you, you just need to tell me how is the image different from the object. Okay? Don't need to draw. According to new syllabus only. But some schools may still teach. Yeah. Your school will probably teach you like the three ways. Right, so like that. 
then the diagonal one first. Is it this one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Then this one. Then pass through the F. Yeah. So this is not just a equal label? Yeah. It's so, called? Yeah. New syllabus. But some schools can still teach. Maybe for extra knowledge or maybe they haven't updated the title. Oh. Yeah, but this one I only go through as a recorded video because not all schools learn this. Yeah, so I actually recorded a video for my own students for this additional part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's for your phone? Okay, okay, no worries. Okay, so you all just need to tell me how is the image different from the object. Let's say I ask you to compare this with this. Hopefully you can see the image is diminished smaller. The image is real and the image is inverted. Inverted means upside down. At first it's like that. Your image change or rotate. So we say inverted lah. Okay, this is the back of the notes as well. What else you need to know is the application. Basically, these two boxes highlighted in red. These are the things that is in your syllabus most commonly tested. Okay. It's page eight. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, right. So you just take note of the two red boxes, lah. Okay, that's like the minimum. But unfortunately, if your school is going to test the drawing. You need to know how to draw, then you can get these easy marks. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, then, so let's ask what is a real image, what is a virtual image? How do you tell whether something is real or not based on lens diagram? If your light arrays, which are bolded, is converging and meeting on the right side, you will get real image. Okay? When will you get a virtual image? is when your light rays do not meet on the other side. So you'll get a virtual image. A virtual image means an image that cannot be captured on the screen. So for example, when you look inside the mirror, your reflection, that reflection cannot be captured elsewhere. Only when you look at the mirror then you can see. Right? Unlike your projector screen. Your projector screen you shine on the wall, shine on the TV, shine anywhere, it can be captured. Because your projector is considered a real image. So that's what real means, can be captured on the screen. Okay, Virtual cannot be captured on the screen. The moment you have something in between you and the mirror, you cannot see your reflection anymore. Yeah. Okay. Then what else we have here? So for this part, you just need to take note of the adjectives, the keywords. How do you describe images? Your questions will look something like that. So this is what I mean. Schools usually now will give you, you just tell me, and describe only the characteristic. Like that compared to like that. Yeah. How is the new image form compared to the object? A bit subtle over here, but you can see it's more than two squares now. Here's two squares. So we say it's magnified by large. It got turned upside down, inverted. The light rays are meeting on the right side. Well, okay, another example. How do you know when they're testing the virtual image example, the magnifying glass one? You realize it? The light rays don't meet or converge on the right side uh, means they're testing the magnifying glass example. So you need to trace back to get your image, which is a virtual image. Virtual side imaginary. This is your magnifying glass example. When you look through the magnifying glass, same thing as uh, that thing that you see cannot be captured on the screen. Only when you look through the magnifying glass, they can see. You cannot project it elsewhere. Right? This is a virtual and enlarged image compared to the original. For your virtual, there's only one 
being tested like usually. So this four is the most commonly tested. Your school may give you six, but usually this four. Question so far? No. Okay. Mm. Inverted is not affected. So originally your object, your object is like that, but your image, can you see it got turned upside down? That's what inverted means. That object is here. The arrow head is upwards for your object. But your image, the arrow head is below. It got rotated. Turned upside down. That's what inverted means. Yeah. How do I tell what? Sorry? It's inverted. Yeah, inverted means turn upside down. Oh. Yeah, so your object, your arrowhead is at first pointing up like this. But if you look at the image over here, it's pointing down like this. It rotated. That's why we call it inverted. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay? Alright, and now we slow down a little bit for your refraction. You all got to learn critical angle? Never hear this good. Critical angle, hear before? Okay, good. Yeah, that was our syllabus. Okay. Refraction refers to the bending of light. Okay, as light passes from one optical medium to another. So light is kind of waves, right? Something to waves also, uh. when medium change, speed of wave will change. Light is a wave. For example, have you all learned sound? Sound chapter, learn already? Yeah. Ah. Sound, when from air go to water, the speed changes, right? Because air and water are different medium. That's what I mean by medium. Uh. Solid, liquid gas. Yeah, so this key concept applies to all your wave chapters. So sound, light, what else? Ear waves. Okay. So in different optical medium, light will travel at different speed. The bending occurs because there is a change in speed. In general, the higher the optical density of the medium, the slower the speed of light. So usually for your light, right, solid has the highest optical density. That means the light will slow down when it's passing through solids. Okay, two scenarios over here. If you are going from a denser to less dense medium, optically denser means slower. Take note for example, you only write optical. Uh. It's here because no space, so I never write. Yeah, over here as well. Cannot just write denser, less dense. If you are answering open ended, you only need to say optically denser, optically less dense for the full marks. Optically denser medium, slower. Optically less dense medium, it will be faster means as the light is moving from your denser to less dense it will speed up or move faster if the speed of light increases it will bend away from the normal okay for example water to glass or like from air to glass you will observe this bending the opposite scenario is also true if you are going from optically less dense means here is faster here is slower Speed of light will decrease, travel slower. And then it will bend towards the normal. Okay, then there's an acronym over here. If it's moving faster, it will bend away from normal. If it's moving slower, it will bend towards the normal. Okay. Then for a light chapter, there is two formulas. There's one definition over here. Refractive index refers to the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in a medium. Ratio of primary school you all learn can be written as a fraction also, right? 
So actually you just explain the formula in terms of English like for this. Okay. You have n equals sine i over sine r. This formula at school states is actually incomplete or oversimplified. This angle of incidence right, should be in air okay, or vacuum. That's very important. Because uh. sometimes your key computer it, how come get error? It's because school speech an incomplete formula. Only the pure students will learn the complete one or the full one. But to simplify things, angle of incidence is always in air or vacuum. This one, angle of refraction always in medium. In other words, numerator is always angle in air, denominator is always angle in medium. Okay, later you'll see how this works. Right, that's for your refraction. Questions? Okay, refraction over here. Then you try? We have a bit of time. This is like the basic like, tree. Which formula would you all use? And take note of which angles you all use as well. I write both formula here, you will try to calculate that. Okay. Effective index is your n. Which formula allows you to calculate what you need? Watch out for the angle, uh, as a reminder. n is 1.5, so just substitute in. Angle of incidence in air should be 50. Sine r is 1.5. Okay. You bring over, you will get this. I'm just breaking things down step by step. If you can see the shortcut, you can go ahead. Huh? Your sign up. Actually, the working not this long one. Technically, you can make it shorter. It's just that some students cannot see, so I write like that. Last step. Sign inverse. This is your e math part. You want to make R alone, you sign inverse both sides. Okay, and you will get 30.7. This is the best. Okay, for your question 4, we should come as open ended 3 marks as well because you need to use both formulas. They are nice enough to remind you that light travels at this speed. Sometimes they don't, they expect you to memorize. What is the speed of light in the perspex block? Okay. 
you realize the speed of light, right? There's only one formula with speed of light in the medium, this one. But you realize you will get stuck, right? Because speed of light you know. This is what you're trying to find. But you don't know n. If you got two unknowns, how you solve? Means what? You need to get n first, then you can solve. Is there another formula that allows you to calculate n? Which is this one. Okay, so sine 20, okay, this one no trick. Sine 30. We're going to get 1.52. Okay, now we got the n, we can substitute inside and then we solve. This is your and you can see over the speed of light in medium. Okay, then if you calculate out, oh. okay, 1.97. So take note, sometimes not so direct, you may need to use two formulas to get your answer. Open-ended, this will be three marks. Okay, last question, I let you all try, and then we can end off today. Lah. The C, I will go through together, the phrasing. Then I'll try the calculation now. Nah. Your phone for me, I have your own calculate. As long as your starting is really correct. Which graphic formula got angle of infection? Then this is your refractive index. Your end. I both formula there for you. Some students can see the shortcut, you can just swap the place of these two. Then your last step.
Okay, so this will be like the two minimum questions, like one formula each. Now you apply this one, n equals c over v, 1.5, 3 times 10 power 8, v. Same thing, you can swap this. Three divided by two actually gives you one point five. Okay. Eh, no, one point five. Sorry. Sorry. The one point five will be low. Three divided by one point five gives you two. And standard form. Uh. This will be meter per second. So do take note. Exact question you'll give you this or not? You'll just watch out, ah. Uh. Right, then let's end off with the phrasing. Why did the direction of light changes at point A? Why did it bend like that? Okay. Outside is faster or slower? Faster. Okay. Nice. You go in slower. The speed of light decreases or light is traveling slower. If you all recall this, if moving slower, it will bend towards. That's all you need for the answer. The first mark is explaining the optical density. So N, okay, you need the glass. That's a higher optical density than N. As light travels from air to glass, its speed decreases and will bend towards the normal. Speed decreases. Higher optical density. Okay, I just top up one last one, then we are done. Another common question that they ask is why doesn't any bending of light occur? Okay. If I do this, you all seen before this kind of question. Why doesn't any bending of light occur if I do this? So then why doesn't There's a change in speed, but the reason is that okay, so I'm right. since angle of incidence is zero, this commonly one mark, okay? Angle of refraction is zero. Okay, so another way to answer this is that whenever your incident light ray is along the normal, then there will be no bending of light. Yeah, angle of incident is zero. Like, there's no angle between the normal and the light ray. Like, angle of incident is zero. Okay, yeah, if not, that's it. Thanks for tuning in online, people. We'll stop here. Okay.